You board a small plane. Nice! You're the only passenger on board. In a few hours, you'll be sunbathing on the beach, sipping something cold and refreshing. But before that happens, you'll face an epic test to see if you've got the kind of survival skills you need to survive in the wild. Count up your right answers and see what it all means at the end of the video. You fasten your seatbelt and fall asleep just before takeoff. Suddenly, turbulence! You wake up from a dream where you were an octopus in an earthquake. The plane's shaking, your luggage falls out of the overhead. This is serious! You strap on an oxygen mask and notice a flash of lightning outside. A second later, you see another flash. But this time, it's your plane's engine. It's on fire. You're falling. The screeching of ripped metal, screams, and then darkness. You pass out. After a few seconds, you open your eyes and find yourself falling from the sky. Okay, get it together. You unfasten yourself from the chair to stop spinning. The first rays of sun appear over the horizon, and down below, you see a dense forest, a green field, and a small pond. By stretching out your body, you can change direction, you can steer. So, where are you going to land or crash? You have three seconds to decide. The best answer is the forest. A fall into water from that high up would hurt the same as falling flat on the ground. But tree branches can soften a fall. You plummet into the forest and lose consciousness. Day 1. Awake. Your whole body aches. Fortunately, you're not injured and you can even walk. Those branches saved your life. Yeah, this is a fairy tale. Now, where to? You don't have a map or a compass. Then suddenly, you hear the sound of a river. You need to choose a direction. Here are the options. Walk in a straight line. Find some moss on a tree and walk in the direction it's growing. Find the river and walk along it. You have 10 seconds to choose. Don't go straight if you don't want to get lost and walk in circles. Navigating by moss? Yeah, I just made that up to mess with you. You should go along the river. It'll lead to a pond or a lake, and there might be people there, or a road, or some signs at least. Day 2. You make it to a lake, but there's no sign of civilization. Now what? Maybe head back up the river? Along the way, you pass out again. You wake up and it's cold, so you drink some river water and try to make a fire. You collect dry twigs, brushwood, birch bark, and moss. Oh, sweet! A gas lighter and a piece of paper in your pocket. What's the best way to start a fire? Put the branches in a pile and pour gasoline on them? Put pieces of paper in the branches and fire them up. Make the branches into a triangle, place birch bark under, and light it. You have 7 seconds, and it's getting really cold. Don't pour that precious gasoline on the branches. It'll burn out too quickly, and those fumes are bad for you. The paper will burn off too fast, and the wood won't catch fire. The triangle of wood will let air pass through it. That's the key. Fire and air, a match made in heaven. (laughs) Get it? Match? Okay. Day 3. You finally get warm, drink some water, and continue along the river. Uh Uh-oh. You haven't eaten anything for three days. Gotta get on it! You don't know how to fish, so you go into the forest to find some food. You have a few choices. Berries, eh, they look delicious and seem pretty juicy. Ants, mushrooms. You have 7 seconds. Choose wisely. Ants are the most delicious and safe thing around. You just can't eat random berries or mushrooms. They can be poisonous. Now, how do you get those ants to march right into your mouth? Hey, I can't hand you all the answers. Day 4. A big bear is blocking your path. You shout to scare it away, but it just looks at you. It's not happy. And now, it's coming your way. What should you do? Run as fast as possible, because bears are big and clumsy. Climb the nearest tree and sit up there till the bear goes away. Lie down in a fetal position and stay absolutely still. 
You have 5 seconds to make a choice, and it better be the right one! Bears are fast and can climb trees like they're oversized squirrels. The right decision is to pretend to be asleep. The bear will see that you're not a threat and probably will pass you by. Day 5. Heavy rain starts to fall. You need to hide under a tree, build shelter, and make another fire. Which of these three trees should you hide under? You have 7 seconds before you're soaked to the bone. The tree on the left is rotten and might crumble at any moment. There's a snake crawling in the tree on the right. Venomous or not, it's not worth the risk. The tree in the middle is perfect. Day 6. Your stomach starts to rumble. Those ants weren't exactly filling. You decide to catch a fish at all costs. Aha! You could use a piece of your clothing as bait. But where can you find a fishing rope? You have 10 seconds for this one. The answer is your shoelaces. They should be enough if you tie them together. After a long day of fishing, you finally catch one. Aha! Sushi! Day 7. Your journey along the river continues. Up ahead, you see that the river splits into two smaller streams. Decision time. Left or right? This could mean life or not. You have 7 seconds to decide your fate. Definitely the right stream. There are wolf tracks by the left stream. A pack of hungry wild animals? Yeah, no thanks. Day 8. No way! You're saved! In the distance, you can just make out the roof of a big house. You run over and tragedy. The house is totally abandoned and almost destroyed. But you still decide to go in. In the hallway, you see three doors. There's a sign with snakes and spiders on the first door. The second door also has a sign, a pit with spears at the bottom. The third door has a lightning bolt sign on it, probably some high-voltage stuff going on in there. Which room should you choose? I'll give you 10 seconds for this one. Go for the third door. The house is abandoned, so the power's probably been out for years. You decide to stay the night, rest, and move on in the morning, even though it's super creepy. Day 9. Time to hit the road again. In the house, you find a piece of broken mirror and grab it just in case. You've been walking for hours, but the river doesn't seem to be leading anywhere. Then you hear the most magical sound. You look up. A helicopter! You need them to see you, but there's no time to start a fire. What can you do? The helicopter's about to fly off. Five seconds, quick! Grab that piece of mirror. You can reflect the sun off it and try and direct the light at the helicopter. Yeah, you've been spotted, but you can't be saved. No. Thunderclouds come out of nowhere and force the helicopter to fly away. Your best bet? Stay right where you are. That helicopter will come back for you tomorrow, hopefully. Day 10. You wake up in a good mood. The rescuers will be here soon. You take off your shoes to wash your feet in the river. Then, a not-so-magical sound. You hear a growl. Two wolves are staring down their noses at you. You start running in a total panic. The wolves start to chase you. They're catching up. There are three paths up ahead. The first road is covered in hot coals. The second one is littered with rusty nails. The third has broken glass all over it. Which path are you going to choose? You have two seconds. The wolves are coming right up behind you. Your best bet is the hot coals. You're running, which means you won't have time to feel any pain. It might get a little hot, but your feet will be safe. The wolves don't dare run through the coals, but they stay nearby. Great, now the rescuers won't know where to find you. Wait a minute, 
How did these three paths appear in the forest anyway? People made them. You're on the right path. Civilization is near. Yeah, food, water, Wi-Fi. Day 11. The helicopter appears in the sky again. You whip out your mirror and go to town. The helicopter starts to fly down, but it can't land on your side of the river. The forest is too dense. The rescuers are waiting for you on the other side. Quick! Three logs lie across the water. Which one's safe to run across? You have 10 seconds, so think carefully. The first log looks old. The river might carry it away at any moment. The third log, well, it's a crocodile. You need to cross the river on the second log. You're saved! Next stop, a cool ocean breeze. But what you don't know yet is that there's one more test. You'll be swept far out into the ocean after you accidentally fall asleep on a little boat you rented. But that's another story. Now, let's check out how well you did. Zero to four points? You better not go camping without an experienced guide. Hey, don't worry, survival in the wild isn't for everyone. 5 to 9 points? Not bad! If you get lost in the forest, you won't panic. But things might get a bit hairy if you have to stay out there for more than a couple of days. 10 to 12 points? Wildlife is your second home. If things get really bad, you could just camp out in the woods forever. Hey, just never mind that part about falling out of the plane without a parachute. Hey, what if I show you some logos, and you'll have to guess which one is the correct one? Let's start with Tesla. Which one do you choose? Yes, it's the one on the right. BMW. What's your choice? Again, the one on the right. Our next one is Subaru. What do you think? It's the one on the left. Do you like online shopping? What's the correct eBay logo? It's red, blue, yellow, and green. So, the one on the right. And now, Coca-Cola. What do you say? The left one, of course. Subway. White and yellow, or yellow and white? White and yellow. The one on the left. Are you a Redditor? Not that it matters, I just need your vote. And the left one is the correct logo. Abigail wanted to give her mom the best birthday present ever, but she had zero ideas. So she decided to sneak into her mom's computer and check what she had saved in her online shopping cart. When her mom left for work, Abigail sneaked into her office and turned on the computer. It required a password, but the girl didn't know it. Luckily, there was a note right next to the computer saying 9669. Abby tried it, but it didn't work. What's the password? The note is just turned upside down. The girl should try 6996. Mrs. Grossman left a jewelry store and found out that she'd forgotten her wallet at the cashier's desk. She returned, but the wallet wasn't there. She called the police. When they arrived, they asked if someone had seen the wallet. Lexi, the cashier, said that she hadn't seen it. Stephen, a customer, said that he had come up to the cashier to ask something, but he hadn't noticed any wallet. Cole, another customer, said that he'd been busy talking on the phone with his wife. It was Stephen. He said there had been no wallet near the cashier's desk, but no one specified where the lady had lost the wallet. The guy knew it because he'd taken it. Esme was having a walk deep in the forest and got lost. After hours of wandering around, she saw the witch's house. The witch was having a party. She turned 300 years old. Esme stuck around for a while to hang out with the witch and her friends. But then the girl asked the witch to show her the way out. 
She answered that Esme had to help them. They had three chocolate bars and there were five people. Esme had to share these bars in such a way that everyone got the same amount of chocolate. If she succeeded, she'd go home. If not, she'd have to stay until the witch's 400th birthday. How can Esme share the chocolate? She should break each of the bars into five pieces. This way, everyone will get three pieces in total. On the last day of school, one of the students, Oakley, went missing. A detective arrived to investigate the case. There were three suspects, Mrs. Adams, the principal, Mr. Jones, the cleaning man, and Nora, Oakley's classmate. Mrs. Adams said she had a lot of paperwork to finish. She had spent the whole day in her office. Mr. Jones admitted he knew Oakley, but he said that he had nothing to do with this incident. Nora said she stayed at school after classes to do her homework for the next day, but she didn't see Oakley after the classes had finished. Who should the detective arrest? Nora, she said she'd been doing her homework, but it was the last day of school. No more homework. She's hiding something. Now, I'll show you some pictures and you'll have to figure out what's wrong with them. Let's go. Here's the first one. Look, the book's spine is on the wrong side. Okay, the next one. The road sign says that one can only turn right from the right lane, but there's no road there. Okay, I'm giving you a break. This should be easy for you. What's wrong here? Right, the athletes are playing soccer with a baseball. You gotta be very attentive. Here's a picture, but something is wrong in it. What is it? Look, the pool is frozen. No fun. In a small and quiet town, someone started to rob the bank every once in a while. The person was so fast that the police couldn't catch them. After another robbery, the police saw the criminal entering a grocery store. There were three customers inside, and they became the main suspects. Can you tell who the robber is? It's the girl in the middle. The first woman is wearing high heels, which means she wouldn't be able to run so fast. The third girl has a cast on her leg, so she's not a robber either. Detective Callum had to travel to a small town where young women disappeared every day. Four of them were already missing. Anna, Elle, Hannah, and Ada. After doing some research, the detective decided that the next target would be one of these four girls, Riley, Ellie, Ashley and Eve. Can you figure out who it will be? It seems like all the missing girls have palindromic names. Those sound the same no matter whether you read them from left to right or from right to left. The only girl with a palindromic name is Eve, so she must be the next target. While Mr. Coleman, a rich gentleman, was on vacation, his office was robbed. The police started an investigation. They found fingerprints of three people and interrogated them. Noelle, Mr. Coleman's secretary, said that she'd been coming to the office to water the plants. Rob, the man's business partner, said that he'd come once to get some important documents. Brandon, the cleaning man, said that he'd been washing the floor every two days. Who robbed the office? It was Noelle. She said she'd been watering the plants, but look, there's not a single plant in Mr. Coleman's office. John was on an expedition to the South Pole. One day, he woke up in a frozen cave. He didn't remember what happened, but he knew he had to get out. He saw three doors and a poster. It said that behind the first door, there was a room filled with toxic gas. Behind the second one, there was a huge lake. And behind the third door, there was a room where sharp icicles fell from the ceiling every second. 
John couldn't swim. Which door should he choose to stay safe? He should pick the second door. He's at the South Pole. It's cold there, so the lake must be frozen, and the guy won't have to swim. Aurora decided to spend her summer vacation in the countryside. She loved taking long trips to the nearby forest on her own. Once, she came across an old mansion. It dated back to the 18th century, and no one had lived there since then. It was dusty inside. There was no light or electricity, but the place was beautiful. Suddenly, the door got locked behind Aurora's back. She saw three ways out. Behind the first door, there were many hungry rats. Behind the second door, there was a 500-foot deep hole. Behind the third door, there was an electrolaser that would immediately burn her. Which door is safe? The third one. There's no electricity, so the laser won't work. Dylan was abroad, enjoying the sun and his long-awaited vacation. One day, he met a beautiful girl at the beach. The guy spent the whole day with her. In the evening, he realized he didn't know her name. He asked if he could take her out the next day. The girl agreed, but only if he guessed her name. Dylan was devastated, but luckily, the girl <sighs> liked him too. She wrote something on a piece of paper to give him a hint. Here's what it said. Can you figure out the girl's name? Ignore the numbers and look at the letters. Together, they make up the name Laura. It must be the girl's name. Jelena wanted to go to the party her classmate was throwing, but her mom didn't let her go. Mrs. Miller felt bad for not allowing her daughter to have some fun. Then, she remembered that her parents had recently moved to a little farm and got some goats. She suggested that Jelena should visit her grandparents on the farm instead. The girl agreed, but instead of going to the farm, she went to the party. When Jelena returned home on Sunday evening, her mom asked her if she had liked the farm. The girl said yes. She didn't know how chickens were so cute. After this, Jelena got grounded. Why? There were only goats on the grandparents' farm. Her mom figured out the girl hadn't gone there. Otherwise, she'd know it. It was snowing in the morning. Detective Callum didn't have much work during the day, but in the evening, the owner of the jewelry store reported that his business had been robbed. Detective Callum asked people who lived next door what they had been doing at that time. In three houses, people said they hadn't left home that day, but the detective figured out that one of them was lying. Who was it, and how did the detective understand it? It was someone from the second house. It was snowing in the morning. If no one had left home, there wouldn't be any snow under the cars. But there's snow underneath this car. A rich woman was traveling on a little but fancy cruise ship. She was robbed one night during a storm. Someone said that one of the passengers, Logan, had been very suspicious the whole time. He'd always been watching the woman. The detective interrogated Logan, but the man denied stealing anything. He said that during the storm, he'd been in his cabin writing a letter to his wife. He then showed the letter to the detective. Here it is, take a look at it. Why did the detective arrest Logan? Logan said he'd been writing the letter during the storm, but the ship was rocking on the waves. The handwriting is too neat for Logan to be saying the truth. Let's see if you know famous logos well. I removed the names from all of them. How many do you think you can recognize? Let's start with some easy ones. You must have this one on your phone. What is it? This is Instagram, of course. It's the fourth most popular social media platform in the world with over a billion active users. Here comes the next one. I bet you get childhood flashbacks now, but what's this castle? It's a bit old school, but I'm sure you managed to recognize it. It's Walt Disney Pictures. Do you remember whom this sign belongs to?
This is Batman, of course. Who's your favorite superhero? You must know this one. So do you have an answer? Of course, it's Tesla. Just two circles, but I'm sure you know it. And you probably have one. It's MasterCard. Does this one ring a bell? Gamers will know instantly, though. This is Xbox. Moving on, what's this sign? It's Toyota, a popular Japanese car brand. Do you still ever watch TV? If so, you should have no problem recognizing this one. It's Cartoon Network, a TV channel. What do you think this is? I have a thing for Japanese cars today. It's Mitsubishi. Moving on from car brands, what is this company? It's Chanel's logo. By the way, Coco isn't Chanel's real name. Her real name is Gabrielle Chanel. Coco was her childhood nickname. When you see it, you know you'll definitely enjoy the next two hours. What is it? Of course, it's the Warner Brothers logo. So many great movies. Looks very familiar, but what exactly is it? It's Sprite. It's the fifth best-selling soft drink on the market. This one is way harder to recognize, so I'll give you a hint. It's a soft drink, too. Yeah, right. It's Dr. Pepper. It's the sixth best-selling drink, going right after Sprite. Another way to spend a great evening. What is this company? It's DreamWorks. What about this purple logo? It's Yahoo. I don't think there's a person out there who doesn't know what this is. It's Hogwarts logo, the school of witchcraft and wizardry from the Harry Potter universe. Back to our non-magical world. What's this company? It's Amazon. The company started out in 1995 as a garage bookstore, by the way. Do you know what this is? It's the PlayStation logo. Does this one ring a bell? It definitely should. It's Monopoly. Also, for some reason, this game has thousands of special editions. Huh? What's that song? Ask Shazam! Even if you're not a gamer, you can probably recognize this. It's The Sims, a life simulator game that was a real hit in the 2000s. It's a new logo, but I think you must know it by now. It's Meta. It's the new name of Facebook Incorporated. They own Instagram and WhatsApp, too. Not as popular as Facebook, but you might know this app. Or ask someone from Gen Z. It's Discord, a messenger. Originally, it was used by gamers. But now there's more users building their communities of interests. Okay, what's this? Yeah, I'm back to car brands again. This is Ferrari. Can you recognize this sign and to whom it belongs? It's Wonder Woman. If you're a traveler, you know it all too well.
It's Airbnb, an online marketplace for lodging. It's a bit old school, but still everyone's favorite. That's Discovery Channel. It's pretty hard, but you know it very well, I'm sure. It's Walmart. What do these two letters stand for? It's Baskin Robbins, a worldwide ice cream brand. Even without the name, it's still recognizable. So, what do you say? It's Doritos. Hmm, a tricky one. I'll give you a little hint. It has to do with clothes. It's Jack Wolfskin, a German manufacturer of quality outdoor clothes. Not so mainstream, but you've seen it a million times. That's Nestle. You must love all things luxury if you have one of those. That's Rolex, a Swiss watch designer. Can you recognize this logo? That's Tommy Hilfiger, an American clothing brand. What about this one? It might seem hard, but I'm sure you'll know it. That's Nintendo Switch. What does this O stand for? This is Opera, a web browser. For fellow oldies, this brings back so many memories. It's ICQ, and if you're from Gen Z, it's a messenger. That's what we used in the olden dinosaur days before Discord, or even WhatsApp was invented. What is this panda bear? World Wildlife Fund, or WWF, that's an international non-governmental organization working on preserving wildlife. You should know it well if you travel a lot. Toblerone, known by many as the airport chocolate. Do you know what this company is? It's the logo of the World Health Organization. 